<laughs> so how are you doing, Taka? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Thank you for joining us on Classic 263 Radio. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh-huh. I have a surprise for you, hey? Music. <laughs> Sorry, second team. I think the was bamboo in the Zona and Vanori, the main instruments in the app. Uh, <laughs> that's your first day, right? Yeah, that your first day in high day. school. Yes, <laughs> my very first day. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. That. How was that day for you? It was alright. It was alright, uh, yeah. this young person. Yeah. And your dad was asking how your first day was. Yeah. And your mother, and you're like, no, I signed up for soccer. <laughs> then Baboko goes, but I was going to be a soccer game. Ah, I know this. Nah. So, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know, it was like at PE, mm-hmm. uh, t- you're supposed to do a sport. Mm-hmm. Then uh, something to do apart from sport. Uh-huh. So, then the overnight was a bad sign up for. <laughs> Soccer. But then your dad was asking about music, you know, even your mom. That's where their concern was. Could see, yes. manau, you are in the kunaita, kunaita the music. Mm. So, can am I right to say maybe you had that pressure from a very young age? What was going through your mind? You know, your first day in high school. You know, I come from a musical background, and there you are going to soccer. But what was your concern? Ah, it was pressure. Honestly, dancing, dancing, I feel it. Mm-hmm. It was the first day, so mm-hmm. I was just a confused form one. You were just a confused yes. form one. Like, <laughs> like most of us were, you know, doing. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you left soccer, what about to see another one that was music? I, uh, I did a bit of basketball. A bit then, of basketball. And then I left. Then I started playing music. Oh. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So before we get much into the conversation, who is Takakunda Mkundu? Uh, Takakunda Mkundu is a 25-year-old uh, guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I do music. Um, I play the guitar. That's my main instrument apart from other instruments and I've I've known music for my life so so which other instruments do you play other than the guitar oh mm-hmm. um mbira marimba uh, bass saxophone drums yeah, drums was actually my first instrument oh really yeah. so you left because I was reading on YouTube your mom actually influenced you I got no this dude is not improving you can take cash and whatever why don't you try the guitar Yes, uh, what happened was uh, I was in the school band. Mm-hmm. Then, then I wasn't actually improving like what she, she was saying. <laughs> and then also, and <laughs> uh, So then, <laughs> uh, then she suggested that I try guitar. Then the journey began. Oh, that's where you started. Yeah. Okay. Now I know I talked about your dad earlier on, but I just want to find out. Did he influence your musical journey in any way, or it was just maybe your destiny? Um, he did. Okay. Uh, cause I remember when I was growing up, we used he used to play a lot of music. So from then, from there, listening to music, it was just something that was being put in my head subconsciously. So mm-hmm. there on, I then developed the love. Music. So, at what age can we say you developed this this love for music? Um, at a pretty young age, I remember maybe let's say when I was in preschool. Wow! So I used to love playing the drums, and I remember uh, I used to hit the pots <laughs> when, I was, when I was a little kid. So from then on, that's when the love began. Okay, is your mom musical as well? Because it kind of hit me that. Look, she actually gave you advice on, on leaving the, the percussion, was it? And you trying the guitar. Yes. So is she also musical or is it something that she sort of inherited because of just being part of the family, part of you guys or musical? Uh, she's not musical. Really? <laughs> but, she's, but maybe she has a musical yeah, ear. Yeah, <laughs> I think she has a musical ear. So 
yeah she she loves music she loves listening to music also so i could say she she has that percentage of music in her okay so um there's this expectation that usually comes with you know being a child to someone who's great or a legend if your dad is a musician and artist of any sort yeah. society has this expectation as if you're sort of a mini god this is how you're supposed to live your life this is what you're supposed to do how has that been for you um on that issue um it doesn't been much really because uh, there was a coincidence now since i played guitar uh-huh. um it was actually easy but yeah i do get that that people expect much but it's just a matter of just uh if you choose that path yeah you just carry on without listening to mm-hmm. and do you feel like maybe you have you choose to feel not that you know you're supposed to feel it now but i'm just saying do you feel like because you have your dad the great mono and there you are you know is have you ever had that maybe uh trouble in trying to be just an individual just being takakunda mukundu but who cannot really divorce himself from mono uh at first when i was starting my when i was getting into the industry it was uh kind of difficult because each and every time people would say ah mono but now people as time goes on now people are actually realizing it later uh-huh. when they say ah Non si taga then later on. Oh, what do you want to later on? Ah. You know, so, yeah, with time you get to to move from that phase. You get to move from that phase. Yes. Okay. Um, you did this collaboration with Hemina, right? Yes. From from India, and I I listened to it. It's it's quite an interesting song. Eh? Um, I loved how it started. It's sort of an Afro fusion feel, is it? And then yes. there's this Indian feel that comes in, and then you know she sings, and then you come through at the end. Like, how did you guys do all that? You know, all those the mixing, the starting with the Afro fusion, and then the Indian, and then you like tell me about it. Um, yeah, that that that's that's was an interesting collab because uh-huh. we did that collab. Firstly, we recorded in 2021. And the twin one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um what she did, uh, we linked on Instagram because uh, that's why I usually post my stuff and then she discovered one of my one of my posts. Mm-hmm. And then she she just sent she, What was this post? Uh I I I forgot really but mm-hmm. I do post a lot a of lot. African guitars and oh. something like that. So okay. she said Uh, let's do something and then we did i remember she sent me the uh, the ideas and then i sent those ideas to my dad and then we sat down and then we did abc and then i, I and then i uh told my friends to put some of the instruments like joseph then he laid the saxophone and after the drum and mm-hmm. uh, bass guitar mm-hmm. And then we structured all that with the help of my dad okay. who produced. Wow. And you did all this online. Yes. How was it? Was it challenging? Was it interesting? Is it something that you've done before or it was your first time? Uh it was my first time, but it was it was really kind of interesting because you get to be communicating on the on the internet rather than uh-huh. in person where you can say this and this and that. So It was kind of back and forth way who we'll do something and then who we'll send her the stuff and then she'll yeah. send some of her stuff the vocals and then the process of mixing and what not what not what not but it was interesting wow i must say yeah. it came out really well here you wouldn't even think there's these two people were in, <laughs> in different geographical locations it was uh, as though you were just in one studio and you know you guys met and um and did the collaboration um let's play the song lila Um, uh, from you and him in a shop
Laila from Hemina Shah with Taka Kunda Mukundu who joins us in the studio this morning. Now Hemina is in India so we spoke to her earlier on just asking her about her journey and how it was for her working with Taka and what the song means and here's what she has. Hi, thank you so much for having me on your show today. So I actually met Takakunda on Instagram. Uh, I came across one of his videos and I checked out his profile and I thought, wow, this guy's really, really good. I should definitely try reaching out to him to see if he would be interested in collaborating. Um, I did have an idea in mind of this Bollywood song that I wanted to fuse into an African vibe. So um, I dropped him a message asking him, you know, if he would be interested in collaborating on a popular Bollywood song um, with an with some African music and uh, he responded straight away and he said yes absolutely that would be a great idea let's do it so I told him about um, my idea and uh, I recorded um, some vocals you know rough vocals and sent them over to him and told him what I had in mind and he completely understood uh, the idea and uh, yeah that's how it all started it's been so much fun working on this project with Taka, I must say. He's very talented, very creative, uh, very professional, and he completely understood my vision of what I had in mind with this song. Um, even when it came to making like the small changes and things, you know, he straight away did them. And uh, before we knew it, we'd just created this most amazing African fusion of this popular Bollywood song. And I'm so, so happy with it. So Lela Melela is actually a very popular song from the 1970s. Like everybody knows this song. Um, and the meaning of Lela Melela, uh, when I translate from Hindi to English, it prob it's probably going to sound a little bit funny, but this is what it means. Lela Melela means that I'm a beautiful woman and I'm so beautiful that everybody meet wants to meet me privately and how I drive everyone crazy every time they set their eyes on me. So I think you get an idea of what the song means. It's just a very fun, upbeat dance song that um, that is played in every single Indian event you can imagine. Everyone absolutely loves this fusion that we've created. I've had so many messages and comments from people who are just amazed at how we managed to put this together from two different parts of the world. Uh, they love the rhythm, they love the beats, it's really catchy, and they've said it makes them want to get up and dance, which is a great thing. So um, yeah, we've had so many positive comments about the song, and um, it's also available on Spotify and other um, online streaming platform so that's a great thing as well that people will be able to listen to it and they love the video as well that's uh Hemina Shadi speaking to us all the way from Singapore I understand that, that is where she is at the moment and she explained to us what the song um means you, when you heard like the message and what the song was about what went through your mind uh, honestly, what went through my mind was translating it into Shona <laughs> <laughs> and make it interesting mm -hmm. and fun. All right. So yeah, that's what we did uh, with Kelvin. Kelvin's band. We did the vocals. Oh. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, so Kelvin, do you have to chara chara na iwana? Yes. And you know what I was thinking? Because in my mind, I was like, the song is Layla. I thought Layla was the chara kadinga. You know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> actually, the Leila was the name of this Chalakadenga oh, that you were singing about. I don't know, oh my, name. oh my, beautiful! Yes. It's great that she managed to join us and and just uh, tell us. And uh, from the way she was explaining, it it, it it sounds as if you guys have created um, some sort of rapport. You guys are working together really well. And she describes you as this um, very talented, artistic young person. And you know, to think that you posted something on, on social media and somebody from somewhere else in the world that reached out to you really shows the power of social media. I mean, what do you have to say to upcoming artists and other people out there who are in different kinds of work in as far as um, utilizing digital spaces is concerned? Oh, one advice I would give is that um, it's just to be consistent and also one thing that I've noticed is that uh, when you post something, people from outside the country are more interested in the Africanness of yourself. Oh, okay. So I've had instances where 
people would actually post um people would actually comment and later on i would realize that oh this guy is quite popular and so on and so on uh-huh. so one thing that i would recommend is to just post something african so because they want something unique mm-hmm. something that's you it's different from when you post something like let's say uh disclaim i'm not trying to cause <laughs> anything so uh like posting let's say um a genre from America, let's say rock mm, for example. Mm. Already there are guys who play rock guitar better. Mm. The, the one thing that can make you outstanding is that uh, if you play something from your country, so that actually made me realize that you, you can actually you know, make a difference with your type of music. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And this is something that we were talking about earlier on, remember, before the interview, and we were saying, you know, we have all these great artists, um, you, the likes of the Mwenja Matoles, who have a unique a sound, a unique taste, and a unique feel. And here we have um, Takakunda, who is playing his guitar, his mbira, yes. and it's something that is unique to the outside world, and something that should speak to me as an African, something that is sound that I should identify with. But for some reason, this is according to my own assessment, correct me or I'm wrong. For some reason that genre doesn't really thrive in Zimbabwe. It's as if we shy away from who we are as a people and it only takes those from outside to appreciate our our culture. You know, why do you think that is the case? Um, I think like what you say, people shy away from, from our music, but mm. Um, if you actually embrace it, you would find people will appreciate. Uh-huh. Uh, in this case, like people with Jar Prazer, mm-hmm. I think it does work. Well. Jar is. And I wish people actually knew the power of of our music. Because I remember this other day, I I posted just a video of a, just me playing a random video of a Songora song, mm-hmm. and then some guy just actually inboxed me and and he was actually marveling at what I was doing and then come to realize later on that that guy just won a Grammy (laughs) (laughs) really? yeah so yeah and you didn't even know I didn't even know I remember he actually inboxed me and he said ah that's really nice um and then I I remember that time I was busy and then I said ah this guy what did you go back? If I were you, I'll just go back and yeah. say hi. So. <laughs> yeah, so the funny part was like, um, um, I hope one day we can work. And I was like, cool. And then later on, yeah, it was actually last year. Ah, come on, Taka. So, Have you spoken to him ever since? Honestly, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Manager, see, I know, um, I know your manager. Uh, knows yeah, not yeah, I, right now, but I do not know who is failing us because <laughs> we have this huge... Thing that's in front of us. I mean, yeah. you need to grab it. Yeah, so that's the case with African music. You, mm-hmm. you never know well, who might actually see the, the stuff that you post. That's one thing that I've come to realize. Alright, if someone can actually just comment and then you realize, ooh, he has worked with huge names and then, mm-hmm. yeah, he's actually a fan. That's the. That's You're the a fan, word. and this actually sort of. Reminds you yeah. or tells you how great you yeah. are. Yeah, mm-hmm. not just how great I am. Honestly, I won't say how great I am, but how yeah. proud I should be of my African music. Wow. So yeah. That's 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 something to be proud of. Hey. Um. So tell me something. Have you done any collaborations other than one, the one other than the one that you did with um Hemna? I remember this this project that I played on. Uh, it's called the gathering that was done in Italy. With some Fernando guy. Yes, yeah. with yes, yeah, it, it won an award in mm-hmm. Italy. Mm-hmm. So it was actually an interesting project. Uh, then we went there last year. And I've noticed that most of your music is in the form of instrumentals, and these instrumentals have actually have titles, right? So here I am thinking, like, how does this guy do this? Because for you to actually come up with a title to a song, it means it has meaning. For someone who's just listening, but you've actually put some meaning to it. So how do you do it? Coming up with an instrumental, giving it a title so that it becomes a story, giving it life. What makes you give such an instrumental, African freedom or something? How, how does that happen? Um, it comes from how I would be feeling at that time, whether it be um, happy, sad or... Mm-hmm. 
Uh, it just reminds me of a certain time. Why did you bring your guitar though? I thought you were going to walk in here with your guitar <laughs> and you're going to play it for us. That's something that I was really, really Oh, really ah. I left it in touch. I actually have a gig. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. So yes. you just decided to leave it. Please do bring it with you yes, next time because we'd love to hear you play. Yes, I'll definitely. Mm -hmm. And another thing, I'm sorry, I'll keep uh, bringing your dad up, but you know, we, we cannot not talk about him. Um, some people would think that maybe you've heard it easy in your musical journey because of whom your dad is, you know. Oh, probably because his dad is mono or this guy has had it easy he hasn't worked hard for whatever it is that he's getting or for the recognition that he's getting because of his name what do you have to say about that um that's a really interesting question <laughs> so, <laughs> uh one thing that i'll say i won't discredit my dad playing a big role and and him putting He's based in training me and coaching me. Uh -huh. uh, he did. A, he played a very big part. I worked also practicing and doing my best, and just really pushing and and doing my best. So I won't really discredit or not say it on it. It was hard or saying our life was really tough. Yes. It was actually easier for me since because he entered and did the dirty work now mm -hmm. for me it was actually a bit better it was better yeah. so what is it that you can say inherited from his music and his work ethic just to be proud of being african and basically loving african music because i remember growing up we used to listen to a lot of african music mm -hmm. uh, Lights of Mutukuzi, Mapfumo, especially okay. Mapfumo. So, oh wow! So you yeah. actually did a cover on one of uh, one of them. Right? Oh, so yeah. I'm going to play Nguva just now, one of your instrumentals. But walk me through your feelings when you when you worked on it. What was going on? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember I had a we had a gig, and then an emergency happened, so we were late, and mm -hmm. then. Also, we were late, we did a good job. I remember the guy wanted to be mad, but since we did a good job, <laughs> very key. He just softened up. Yes, and then he was saying, So, Bangua, Fana, Fana, Badangua, and then he kept on beating Gua. So, one day after the gig in the middle of the night, I was just composing, and then. And then you came up with Gua. And I came up with Gua. Alright, so let's play Gua um, from Takakunda Mkundu. You had the explanation behind. Um, that composition, he says he was late for a gig, but fortunately enough for him, they managed to play very well, such that being mad was not an option for <laughs> for whoever it is that had invited them. So here is Nguva from Taka. is riddled by a lot of ills we're talking um, drug and substance abuse and how are you managing how are you navigating how are you escaping from that and just being i hope you're an upright person <laughs> I, <don't worry. laughs> yes. um, yeah, it's just really focusing on what you want to achieve so uh, that's one thing that I, that has led me to just you know you want the 
the good side the music I, I'm keen to be working 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 and also practicing trying to better myself so all right so do you do anything else outside of music or you're into music full time full time all right full time musician. and and how is that how is it like because some people you know you know we've talked to to a lot of artists and they seem to be just singing one song hey I do my guitar I do my daddy and they're all crying then you have the piracy that is something that we hear all the time so that when I'm at home and I'm listening or I'm talking to an artist I'll think hmm, maybe I shouldn't do this full time if you want to do it like how are you doing it and what's your advice to fellow artists out there who want to venture into music full time um, with music I would think that I would say it's not to quickly rush into full time okay uh, but just being be take it slow uh, then it then eventually maybe yeah it if it works out you can go into full time music mm-hmm. so it it can actually work out i was actually fortunate to start early i did music when i was in high school so now growing up um it was actually easy for me to earn at least a decent living so so nano so so near you know i can i can go from a to b so it's just a matter of just Persuading Shingira. So, Shingira yeah. yeah, yeah. was right. Okay. And it worked out. All right. And um, when we talked about your cover that you that you did um, for One Matema, and I, I heard your dad say um, uh, Thomas Mafumo then called. <laughs> <laughs> How was yeah. that for you, knowing that you know all he acknowledges my way? Ah, it was one of those wow moments because mm-hmm. I didn't expect him to call. Actually, I remember just doing the cover a few days. Yeah, I got good feedback from from a lot of people, and then the other day I was just sleeping, and then my dad actually woke me up and said, "Hey." hey <laughs> 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 it was one of, one of those moments I was like, wow, and wow, it was it was just amazing to know someone that you look up to, loved uh, mm. the work and embraced. I didn't know that he would actually take his time off to just call, you know, mpakampa na kadi kuzo zula sarape. So to akaipa. Yeah, it was really amazing. So you're you're a great person, Taka. I'm sure one of these days, to chat chatos or kuvering, I've made you a top bottom nigga because there's this <laughs> artist that you would have talked about. I am so stuck on the on the Grammy Award winning artist, and please, when you need the studio, just just inbox him and tell me how it goes because I'm going to make a collaboration. Yeah, yeah, top of me, and you're yeah, sleeping yeah. on it. Yeah. So let's let's listen to Vanuatu tema, your cover. <laughs> Anyway, we've run out of time. I'd have loved to have you here even for the whole day, but I know you have to go. I also don't have time on my side and you have a gig. Yeah. But um, before you go, what are your last words to those who are listening to you at the, those who want to be artists and your fans, just the generality of the Dragons? Um, just be proud of who you are, be African. Mm-hmm. Don't go wrong on that. I assure you 100 Ten percent. One hundred and ten percent. Yes, I don't go wrong. So yeah, that's just it. So that's Takam Kundu there. He says, just be African, embrace who you are, love yourself. <laughs>